welcome to Monday, June 8th. Monday, June 8th. Oh man, we made it. Hopefully everyone is doing well. Everyone is staying healthy. Everyone had a good weekend. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the weather out there. Of course, you're watching Chicago Music Revealed. I'm Mike Jeffers, Chicago Jazz Magazine, chicagojazz.com, and the Director of Programming for and Entertainment for the Epiphany Center for the Arts, 201 South Ashland Avenue. We will be announcing a music series kicking off in September. Fingers crossed. Hopefully everything will be good and everything will be happening with COVID-19. But we're excited over there. We've got an incredible space. We can't wait to show it to everyone live and in person. So until then, stay tuned. Visit epiphanyshy.com for all the information, all the updates, and all of the uh, details uh, that will be announced very soon. We're looking at July probably starting to announce stuff. And of course, go like the Facebook, Instagram, all of that good stuff. You can see some really cool pictures too of the Epiphany Center for the Arts. Now, those of you that watched the Friday show, uh, I'm sure that you saw there was a lot of action going on, a lot of technical problems going on, although uh, we did have some great conversations. So my thanks to everyone that participated. We are going to actually plan another bass guitar summit here in the very near future. We're going to have everybody back on and we're going to actually record it ahead of time so that we know the stream works and then launch it. We thought we could do it, but there was so many People coming on to the stream at the same time, we kept crashing out, which is a good thing. We had a lot of viewers on all the different platforms, which caused some of the stuff to crash out as well. So thanks to everyone, all of you watching as well. I appreciate everyone sticking with us. I really appreciate all the musicians sticking with me and bearing with Frank Russell and I, who had the great idea to do that. So for those of you that didn't see it, don't worry. We are going to actually drop a couple of preview videos uh, and pull some video out of those uh interviews that we did we had daryl jones on we had chuck webb on we had frank russell on we had a whole host robert patterson bear williams i mean the list goes on billy dickens but we had a lot of technical problems so i'm going to pull out some clips we're going to drop little short little snippets and then when we do the next interview uh we will record it and i will make sure everyone knows about it because the information we were talking about that didn't get on camera that wouldn't stream is incredible so stay tuned for that but i digress it's monday episode 49 of chicago music revealed and i am very excited i'm going to bring liz mandeville up here on the screen right now liz how are you hey mike hi everybody i'm great Man, I'm I'm glad I I'm doing great. I'm doing great. The weather's beautiful, and I'm excited to have you on because you have so many things going on. Even though COVID nineteen stopped all live performances, you've got your blues happy hour. We're going to talk about. You have your live streaming yoga sessions that you do that we'll talk about. You have a new release that we're going to talk about, playing with fire. It's on LizMandeville.com, and. As if you didn't have everything else going on, you're also going to be participating in an incredible virtual summer fest that's going to be benefiting the Greater, Depo food, Greater Deposit Food Depository. I knew I would say that Greater <laughs> Chicago Food Depository. I can spit it out. I can spit it out. And and that's going to be coming up June 18th. I mean, there's some heavy hitters on this show, man. Dennis DeYoung, Jim Peterick, Michael McDermott. Then they're going to have 16 Candles, a whole host of other groups, and you. Yeah are doing a very special video and uh <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that first i thought that that would be kind of cool um tell us about the details on this what are you going to be doing for this incredible festival and uh i'll fill everybody in on where they can check it out chicagoevents.com but tell us about it what's what's the what's the video and what's the performance you're going to be doing well the video is uh the video really new the just dropped March 7th was the day, and uh, we had the last live concert at Buddy Guys Legends on the 15th of March, and then after that, all the clubs were shut down. Yeah. But uh, and I, since I just put this record out, and own a record label, so it was a huge investment for me. And then all the gigs, the promotional gigs, got canceled. Had two tours set up; they were both canceled, and um, I immediately got proactive. Uh, I play guitar, washboard, I'm a songwriter, and uh, I co-wrote all the songs on this new album. It's called Playing With Fire, and it's my fourth release for Blue Kitty Music. Uh, I recorded uh, four albums for Earwig Music Company, Michael Frank's record label, before that. 
But this one is my own baby that I started with Willie Big Eye Smith, the drummer, the Muddy Waters drummer. Sure, yeah. So um, with, um, with that, um, the, the record label, I have a studio here in my home. And guys would, were calling me up and going, oh, my gosh, uh, after the last economic crash, people were booking themselves into Chicago and had no place to stay. Because the clubs are like, we have to stay open. We can't afford to buy hotel rooms, too. So it started with a guy from Oklahoma, and then uh, a guy from Italy came over, and uh, they stayed here. Uh, Dario Lombardo from Italy, he had a gig on the Chicago Blues Festival, and um, he had no place to stay. <laughs> I mean, flew over <laughs> from Italy, and like no <laughs> hotel rooms. I'm like, oh, okay, well, um, we met through a mutual friend at a jam that I was hosting, and I said, well, you can stay in my studio. While you're here, we have to record three tunes. So... <laughs> He says, okay, and um, we wrote those three, and then he came back. We ended up touring together. We have really wonderful mutual friendship, musical friendship, and he and I wrote this song, Everybody Got Wings. Everybody Got Wings came from, I went down to an Otis Taylor show at Millen Park, and Otis Taylor has a thing called Dance Blues. The focus is it's blues-rooted but it's also got a lot of rock flavor. He's got the guitar player from Indigenous. And he had Chicago's very own Ann Harris, uh, Lynn. Ann Harris is such, she plays with her entire body. I mean, she's so incredible and inspired on her violin. And I was thinking Dario about this. Well, we should write uh, some uh, trans blues then, <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's do it. We got out the guitar and started jamming, and I started just playing around with some lyrics. And um, we went to record the tune, and the drummer had to leave, so we had no drummer on the session. Wow. And uh, Steve Hart, the bass player, Steve Hart, was working with me on that session, and he was playing uh, a stand-up bass. And I said, oh, just for the heck of it, why don't you just bow on this one? Because he told me he could bow. <laughs> so he's like bowing away like and, and the song came out and it's kind of this meandering kind of thing and i thought oh my god this is a dog <laughs> so i put it away i didn't even work on it for like six months i worked on the whole rest of the album because then peter strike came over from the netherlands we recorded four tunes um my friends came from paris big des and gilles gabizon we recorded three tunes so this album is a compilation of all these different flavors of blues and like one style one guy his whole thing is ragtime and the paris guys are really into the 50s chicago sound like electric blues and so um this song uh that I, I i was walking and i was listening to the women in blues channel on spotify which incidentally i'm on spotify please follow me <laughs> i want to be followed hey man plug What's away up? plug Not away <laughs> but anyway so i'm listening to i got Inspired by this band, the Muddy Magnolias, I'm like, that's it, that's it. I want to do a trap blues. So I went into the studio, and I always work with Jim Gotzi. He's got a magnificent um, ear. He is like the first call guy. He works with earwig, alligator, yep. black top. I mean, all of the study with Jim Gaines in Memphis. Uh, he's recorded ZZ Top, Johnny Winter. I'm the yeah. He's got a huge background. So I told him what I wanted to do. And he's like, cool, get out the synthesizer, start writing beats. So this song is like the slide guitar of Dario. And his ba his background is he played with Phil Guy for 19 years, Buddy Guy's brother. Oh, yeah, sure. He worked with Phil, toured with Phil. He and I are, are like musical brother and sister. We work together. It's really simpatico. Um, then we have this, like, the, I got Ann Harris to come in and record on this track. Oh, she's she, awesome. She's incredible. She was so turned on by the song, by the message of the song, that she wrote a whole string section. I didn't even ask her to do it. She just came to the studio and said, here, if you want to use this, this is really, <laughs> I, I just felt it. So I'm like, yes. <laughs> so then all of a sudden, I'm so excited about this. This is my most favorite song on the album. Uh, it's It's got that trip hop beat to it. Yep. It, it's got, uh, it's got a, a vocal that is not my usual belter vocal. It's more a sensitive vocal. 
It's a very emotional song, and it kind of speaks to what our country has been about, uh, the world has been going through, yeah. first with the COVID panic, and then the anger and rioting, and uh, and there's uh, the, the the DJ that I have worked with, and I, I also have an alter ego that does dance music on the side. I also oh. have an alter ego that does <laughs> jazz music. I mean, I'm That's like- That's right, I, I knew that, I knew that, I knew that. <laughs> Well, I called the DJ, and when Lynn told me about this benefit, Lynn Orman has been putting this thing together, and she and I are friends for years. And uh, she said, do you have a video from your band? And I'm like, well, nothing recent, but let me make a few phone calls. I called Zoe. He's like, yeah, let's do it tomorrow. I put together outfits. I have like there's a there's verses about I dreamed we were angels I dreamed we were devils, I mean so I have outfits. Uh, I called Anne. Anne went out in her backyard and just she had wings. Everybody got wings. <laughs> she has butterfly wings and she's got her beautiful braids and she's just out there dancing and playing the music. I called Dario. He went into the studio. He teaches in a jazz institute in Torino, Italy. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, he's the he's the deal. He's yeah. the real deal, man. He went in there and had a video shot playing Heart and Fly. He shot all day long down in the Gold Coast. And then he put this all together and we delivered it. And I'm just so excited about this video. I'm just like, Well, and, and we talked a little bit, we talked offline last week. And this was like right before everything got shut down. So you actually have a lot of video of stores that unfortunately got looted at the in the first part of the protests and stuff that were not the protesters that were looting it by the way right um but you actually have video of some of these places that are that are unfortunately destroyed now so i mean you really were able to capture chicago right before the covid 19 thing all hit which is amazing it just was so uh synchronous that it synchronicity is the word for it I mean, everybody heard Chicago Food Depository, and I have a friend who cooks for them two days a week. Who she, she cooks for a Just Harvest, which is the uh, the food pantry in Rogers Park, mm -hmm. and they have helped me out during this COVID shutdown because I'm like I'm totally out of work. Right. I have like this. I had gigs singing jazz they were all canceled i had i mean i had my whole calendar loaded and it all disappeared and uh i am very fortunate that i have a place to live and um my husband and but still i'm not able to contribute my part so my friend has gifted me with food from the food bank oh, wow. once a month since i mean it's been like i was sitting there thinking how can i give back to this place i was like should I volunteer to be a dishwasher? <laughs> you know? And then this came up and it's like, oh, thank you. The universe delivered. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I know I've said this before on the show, but um, I mean, you know, let's reiterate it. I mean, in the in the summer, you I mean, personally, you usually play tons of gigs. I know when we first met, we were doing you were doing the Chicago Blues Fest years ago, maybe 10 years ago when I was doing some of the merch stuff. And yeah. I mean, you were going from one blues fest to another fest to another fest and then all your club gigs and everything. So the fact that this thing hit right before the summer, obviously canceled the Chicago Blues Fest, everything happening in Chicago, but also around the country and around the world. Because didn't you have some things set up potentially for Europe and all that, too? Right. That that yeah, probably uh, has been put I on hold. Six weeks in Europe. Uh, it's all gone. Yeah. Uh, but they they decided they would put it off to the the gigs are booked for 2021, but this is the case with just about every musician I know. And what I decided to do was um, I'm good with I'm not good with with YouTube because I'm too self critical. <laughs> if I start looking at the video, I'm like, oh no, oh no, that's not good. That's not good enough. <laughs> so I never post it, which is why I don't have any video with my band but um with facebook live you can't edit yourself you just go out live and it's just me i'm i'm, I'm well aware i'm well aware <laughs> <laughs> that's why i got this show and everybody that watches this knows i can't edit anything so it is what it is but yeah i mean that's the beauty of it it's almost like you're playing live at a performance and uh it is what it is and here you go and i think you're doing a you're it's getting pretty successful for you isn't it well i 
I, uh, I just put it out there because I thought people are bored and anxious and nervous and my yoga studios closed as well, the places where I was teaching, so I couldn't offer and I need to be accountable. I mean, I'm, I'm very fit myself, but I would have fallen right off the wagon and become a big, whoa, there goes my light. <laughs> I would have become a Pillsbury Dough Girl uh, if I hadn't said, okay, I'm going to do this Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I do Hatha yoga. Mm -hmm. I offer a Hatha yoga class with pranayama because the pranayama is the breathing aspect. And you can control your moods and you can focus your mind using your breath. And it's just ah. such a wonderful tool to have when you're feeling anxious. Yep. Yep. And on Sunday, uh, so I do Hatha yoga Monday and Wednesday at 4 and Friday at 1.15. And then on Sunday at 1 o'clock, I do um, meditation and mantra. I use singing bowls or we do mantra. And it's Sanskrit. So it's like just really resetting your entire biosphere just chill yeah no no exercise involved <laughs> <laughs> but then thursday and sunday at 6 p.m on facebook live i also do um the hour blues part that's a, that, I've, I've seen all of it and um you know hats off to you for for like creating that and sticking to a schedule because you know I, I feel like, and that's why I started this show too, is so that there was some way for us to connect everyone into all the different musical genres together during this whole incredible pandemic situation that shut the entire entertainment industry down. But also it keeps, keeps me on task so that I've got something at six o'clock I've got to get to. So I jam my schedule packed full so that it doesn't linger into the evening because I got to get to six o'clock. It really helps. And I think the live stream thing to your point is great because it's like i mean you know if you if you try to do a performance and you're playing like you did at buddy guys or anywhere all these festivals you're not you're playing it's live it's interacting you're able to interact with your audience on facebook live and it's almost like you're playing at a club with them so you're not yeah. going back and editing and i think that 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 just turns content out which drives more people into your platform which helps in the long run with building an audience and connecting and building your brand out right well, that's, that's hopefully that's going on. I'm hoping. And I try not to repeat myself. I try to do features on each show when, um, when John Prine and, uh, Bill Withers both passed in the same week, I did a memor a memorial set for them where I did three songs by each artist and I kind of reinterpreted them into my style. Mm -hmm. So instead of John Prine being the folky that he was, he got to, do some shuffles and lump de lump. <laughs> <laughs> I got on a Sam Cooke kick for a while. I was doing a lot of Sam Cooke. And recently, one of my fans has asked me for Rolling Stones. So I've been d diving into that. And also, I've used this time to woodshed with another guitar player that I know who is in Michigan. And we both were... Um, we both signed up for these guitar classes online and I'm like, well, you turned me on to these classes are awesome, <laughs> but I have no discipline and I would like do the first one. And as soon as it got hard, I'd be like, Oh, do something else. <laughs> and he goes, I did the same thing. <laughs> so we said, okay, we're going to meet a couple times a week online. We're going to do the classes. And we already finished one class, Jeff McEarlane playing through chord changes. And uh, now we're doing a Matt Schofield class. It's really wonderful. Yeah. It's just wonderful. I just feel myself growing. I mean, in every way, I, I'm i really grateful for this COVID-19 lockdown. Well, I think, you know what? I, th I think you're one of those musicians, and I talk about this on the show, and so everybody that's watched the show knows what I'm going to say. But I mean, you know, I, I think that this is one of those moments that you're going to have musicians that can take advantage of the pause because, you know, I mean, you otherwise you'd be on tour running from one gig to another to another traveling and doing everything. And yeah. then another year would go by and you would never take online guitar classes and really woodshed and open up your playing or you wouldn't be doing a live stream to connect with more people virtually that you're probably going to continue doing after everything starts to get somewhat back to normal because you're connecting with so many different people. So, I mean, you know, I, I think that people that are going to come out of this that are thinking that way are going to be, 
ahead of the game, if there's a silver lining in any of this mess, that might be one of them, is that everybody's going to come out of it that's taking advantage of this little pause right now, maximizing and being able to grow as an artist. I think they're going to come out of this and be like, wow, I'm glad that this happened, just as you are saying, right? It, it is a wonderful opportunity for growth, and I and I agree with you, Mike. The live streaming thing is, it's I I said to myself that this year I was going to do a podcast, mm -hmm. and with trying to get the album done and everything, I had spent every minute in the studio. I was the entire month of August from one o'clock in the afternoon to one o'clock in the morning. I was at Jim's house in his studio, finishing it up doing the production work, mixing, mastering, adding people. Um, Ann came in, Rock and Johnny Bergen came in and did wow. some work on that. Uh, I have um, uh, Dizzy Belinsky came and played some harp on it. I had to take things out, mix things up. And, you know you know how it is. Yeah, make yeah, yeah. So that was the real focus there. And then in October, I had a tour in Europe came home November. I spent the month of November on the road in Florida, December. I went back and toured Paris and Belgium. And then I came home and, uh, it was, you know, I had gig in January and released the record in March. And then like everything I had planned, I had the whole schedule, yep. bang, all gone. So I'm really loving the live stream and people have asked me, would you please start doing some stuff on Instagram? I'm working on that. And uh, I want to maybe add a show sometime during the week on Instagram. Oh. And my friend, Steve Arby down in Florida is always telling me, YouTube, Liz, YouTube, YouTube, get the YouTube. <laughs> so, ah. Uh, <laughs> I understand there's YouTube live also. There's YouTube live, but you know, you can take like what we're going to do with this show. You can take and download and save the Facebook and, and the uh, Instagram live. You can download, save it. You can pull those files off and upload it to YouTube. So you don't I necessarily have to, yeah, you don't have to necessarily redo the reinvent the wheel. You've got to do it a certain way, but there's a way to do it. So. Oh, thank you, Mike. There you go. <laughs> I'm giving you one night off now. Now you don't have to take that extra night to do a YouTube live. My husband will appreciate you. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, well, let's talk a little bit about your background too, because I find it fascinating. I mean, you know, somebody like yourself, now you're a Chicago blues hall of famer, right? I mean, and yeah. you've got four releases out, but you've been playing for many years and hitting the scene and playing with a lot of different artists. How did you first get involved and interested in blues? Well, I have four releases on my record label, but I also have That's four right. of my own on Earwig. And I started playing, um, I started playing guitar, and I didn't realize that blues was a separate genre from folk music because I came to it through Lightning Hopkins, Lelly, you know, that whole neo folk thing that happened. Um, uh, I'll admit it: Joni Mitchell, Leonard Cohen. That kind of thing. Great. And uh, and I've always been, I love all kinds of music. So I've always had a radio in my hand or, or an iPod in my hand or something. I'm always listening to different stuff. And my friends would turn me on to different stuff. So I'm listening to, I love Louis Jordan and Louis Armstrong and Louis Prima. In fact, I was thinking about doing a show, all my Louis. <laughs> Hey, that really, would be that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. I really love I, I love the saxophone and I love the male voice a lot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, recently, my friend Daryl Nitz turned me on to Ella Fitzgerald, did a show, produced a show. And uh, so I started listening to Ella Fitzgerald and scat and all that. And I'd been I'd been kind of knowing about it, but it kind of really got me to think about how, how scat is a solo, just like. Yep. And Ella Fitzgerald is a bebop artist. But anyway, me, I started out because I, my parents moved from, I, well, I started out playing the, trying to play the piano when I was three years old and writing music when I was just a little infant and, <laughs> and uh, just was totally annoying. And then my parents moved <laughs> when I was in high school, like right in the middle of my high school, I moved to a new town. I didn't know anybody. And I'm like, I'm so socially awkward. And 
um, trying to figure out how do I get to know some people. And I noticed there were some kids who played guitars and mandolins and banjos. And I thought, okay, I'll try to make friends with them. But I didn't play an instrument. I just could sing. So I asked one of the girls in that group, could you help me get a guitar and help me learn how to play it? And she's like, okay. So I started learning folky chords and I learned that stuff because that's what they played yeah. was the Leonard Cohen and the, you know, the, the Neil Young and that kind of stuff. And then when I got uh, a little older, I came to Chicago to try to do theater. Um, but I was really, really totally socially awkward. I mean, no skills at all. I mean, so shy. And so the idea of auditioning for a part in a play, I mean, crushing, I couldn't do it. I, could, I just couldn't do it. So um, I noticed that there were places where people played music and I went in and started meeting these blues people. And one of the first blues people I met was Aaron Burton, the bass player. Yep. Yep. Aaron and Larry Burton had a band. Larry was his brother, the guitar player. And, and those guys were singing with Lavelle White at the Kingston Mine. And I think and I was going to DePaul. My mom had paid for a semester there. And uh, I right wandered around. in there, and college was over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nope. <laughs> I'm here. This is what I'm doing now. <laughs> I eventually did go back to school, um, but... Aaron, Aaron gave me some wonderful advice. He said, learn three songs. He talked like this. He's like, well, yes, you got to learn three songs. <laughs> uh, he was like a musical pattern in his own voice. He's from <laughs> Mississippi and just a, like a really great uncle to me. Uh, took me under his wing and was like, yeah, nah, 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 you got to go to the jams and meet some <laughs> fellas. And I'll try to get up in Sang. <laughs> so I did that and I ended up putting a band together um, with my then boyfriend and just doing cover tunes, working all over the city. Nobody else would book the band, so I had to. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I learned the business. I mean, just having to do it. And, uh, and eventually it came around that I met up with Aaron again and he invited me to be on the Chicago Blues Fest. And I thought, oh, yeah, blah, 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 bar talk. Yeah, right. <laughs> he, meant, he meant it. <laughs> that that band that I had with my then boyfriend had broken up. I We we worked together. I'd gotten us out on the road. We But I didn't record, so it was kind of pointless. So I stopped, and I went back to college, put myself through Columbia College in Chicago, working, singing blues at night and going to school during the day. Wow. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that was well, amazing. And you, and you have to be really determined to do that because, you know, when you get out of Kingston Mines or somewhere at 4 o'clock in the morning and then you got to muster up the energy to go to Columbia College, you got to really – you're in at that point. You have to really want to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be like, you know what, <laughs> I'm good. So what did you go I to Columbia for? I for it myself. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <different>. right? <laughs> when parents put up the money, then, oh, let's go out and have some beer. <laughs> So when it's my money and I earned it singing all night in a club, I'm there at eight o'clock for Bobby Wilson's uh, vocal class. Yeah, I'm yep. there for Chemo Williams' bass, uh, you know, uh, music 101, and and uh, and uh, Bill Bill uh, um, Bill Russo. Bill Russo, was yeah, the that's right. Music director. So, man, to be under that guy, to yep. learn from that guy. Oh, forget about it. I am missing a class. No, no. Yeah, you learn from you learn from the masters over there. That at that point, that's for sure, because you were there before Bill passed away, and he was running yeah. the Chicago Jazz Ensemble, and that yeah. was like a world-renowned big band. I mean, it, it, that time in Chicago at Columbia was one of those times when all the heavy hitters were actually teaching there, which was really incredible. I was blessed. It was amazing. Yeah. Or Davis yep. was my music theory teacher. Come on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow. I, I, I really, and I, and it was a complete, um, a complete fluke that I went there. I had, I had gone to a jam session at the green mill and I'd been embarrassed on stage by the band leader, whose name I will not mention. <laughs> and he had pointed his finger at me and said, blue singer 
Like that was like calling me like some kind of harlot or something. And he was so rude and disrespectful to me and then ordered me off stage. Like I was going to come back when in, in blues, you sing and then someone takes a solo. Then you sing some more yeah. and then someone else takes a solo. So I was going to come back and scat a little bit. No, uh, uh-uh, you're done. And he said it with a finger, you know, in my face, <laughs> in front of a whole room full of people. Yeah. And I mean, I was so humiliated and embarrassed by this. I just said, oh, I went down and enrolled in Columbia College the next week. I said, wow. I will never be embarrassed and humiliated on stage again. I will be a musician, not a big singer. <laughs> and even after I said to him, my name is Liz Mandeville, he was no, 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 no. <laughs> by doing that horrible thing to me, by embarrassing me like that, he did me a great favor. Yeah. Because now I have a degree in music from those masters I would never have done it. No, and no. Graduated with honors. Oh, that's awesome. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah. Well, and and you were playing live at that point. So when you got out of college, I mean, you already had a career in the blues world, obviously. So it just probably yeah. just just picked up from there because now you have a have a degree in music. You know, a lot of people all throughout the country. You've been doing your own booking. You've been building up your own career already. So by the time you got out of college, you were way ahead of any of the students that were getting out of college then as well, because you already had stuff happening, which everybody's trying to get stuff happening when they get out of college. It's it's another uh, just synchronous synchronous event that happened that the same year I graduated from college. I was working with Aaron Burton at the Blue Chicago Clubs every Tuesday and two weekends a month. Yep. And um, I uh, and Aaron had just signed with Earwig Music Company, Michael Frank's record label, and uh, he had made a deal to do Aaron Burton live from Buddy Guy's Legends, which was my recording debut. He had a band Aaron did at the time that was a review. Everybody sang. Uh, Kenny Smith on the drums, uh, Alan Batts on the keyboards, Aaron on bass, Michael Dotson on guitar, and uh, um, we also had, oh, there were a couple of old cats that are passed away now that played harmonica on the label, and so they were also on the album, and we put this review on at Buddy Guys, and I sang two songs that Michael picked out for me. Uh, and then he, uh, Michael had seen me perform with Aaron and he said, Hey, do you music? And I'm like, ha, do I write music? So he offered me a record deal, a three record deal that same year. Wow. If that hadn't happened, I may have pursued a jazz career because I also love to sing jazz and I love scat and, uh, you know, and who knows what would have happened that in an alternate universe, there's a Liz who's a jazz singer too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good, the good news is, is that you can, you can do both. Your career just went the blues way, but you know, that's the beauty of, of music and the beauty of the fact that you were trained in all these different styles is really, if you wanted to focus on something, you could probably easily do a jazz album and tie it right into the Liz Mandeville sound. It wouldn't be a big deal at all at this point. Right. Well, when I heard Ernestine Anderson, like 2016, I had a terrible car wreck. I was coming home from a gig on the night before Thanksgiving, and I got in a head-on. Well, I, I hit this guy. He was stopped in my lane on the Edens Expressway. Oh. He was, I mean, it was, you know, the night before Thanksgiving is amateur night. Everybody's drunk as hell. There are, there are wrecks all over the place, and I just wanted to get home. And I was alone in my van, thank God. Nobody else was hurt. Yeah. But I hit this guy and I had just sped up. I just turned over into the getting off lane by um, the by the Peterson exit. And I had just sped up. I'd been doing 65 because it was like mayhem. Right. And a little bit of rain and just bad conditions. So I moved over, sped up to 70. Bam. Right. And I hit my head on the steering wheel oh. just as the bag was deploying into my chest. Oh, <laughs> and so uh, I like I got a total shock through my system. I got a frontal lobe concussion. They um, they told me no more performing for you. You're done. I had nerve damage. I couldn't feel my hands or arms, so I couldn't play guitar. I had the wow. concussion, so I couldn't look at screens. I couldn't look at Facebook. 
or YouTube or TV. So what did I do? I listened to WDCB hey. or seven. <laughs> I read books mm -hmm. and I listened to the radio. Yeah. And, and it was the most wonderful thing that could have happened to me because I had the complete rebirth of my musical love. Yeah. Wow. Then listening to Bruce in the afternoon and listening to uh, to uh, Orbert and that yep. Vasa show on Sunday. Oh, oh I yeah, Marshall Marshall Vente and yeah, all that. Yeah, all of that. Wow. Oh, man, I mean, and it was the Christmas season, so all these jazz Christmas tunes, like, mm -hmm. is that you, Mister Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it. And then, of course, all the Roots music they have on there. Yep. And I'm listening to a Hambone and I'm listening to Tom Marker and then the Blues from the Rooster, all that stuff. It was just it was it, it brought me my joy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. And you had to go through all that to get to that point, which sucks. But I mean, you seem to always find like a like a, a, a some sort of a good thing, even out of a bad thing. Um, that's amazing. I mean, I, I'm surprised. I'm su I mean, you could have been killed. I mean, hitting somebody at that speed that way. That's amazing that you, you had a concussion, a but it's nothing a else. Was, oh, my you know, God. I, I mentioned, I tell the story on the, uh, playing with fire. There is a song called the boss lady. Yeah. Boss is yep. Back. Yep. That's my story. I mean, that tells the story of what happened, uh, that, I was I was having big thoughts. I had put out um, I think what what was it? 2016. I had just put out um, was it the Stars Motel? And it was the first compilation record that I made where I co-wrote all these songs with all these other artists. Uh, a woman from Miami, Cuban and a guitar player, and she was Matt Guitar Murphy protege. Oh, wow. Magnificent player, beautiful voice. Sounds like she sings like Bonnie Raitt, plays like Matt Guitar Murphy. Yep. If uh, if Jeff the Skunk Baxter were also channeled in there. <laughs> 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 I mean, wow. I mean, ter terrific record. And three of the four artists I worked with came to town for all the record release parties. And we had festivals and we had, yeah. I mean, gigs. We had a gig at Buddy Guys and uh, we had like, all over the Midwest and they were on all these gigs and then everybody went home and I think I had like postpartum depression <laughs> <laughs> and I, this is the last gig of this whole bunch of gigs before the Christmas season starts up and I'm driving home from the gig and you know the night before Thanksgiving is a great gig if you're 20 yeah. or 30 but if you're if you're older everybody's out drinking in the bars to avoid their relatives. They're like out there getting drunk. So they don't have to talk to mom and dad about why they're not having babies or why they're not married or why they don't have their job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. 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 My yeah. fans are the ones that they are drinking to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> so 11 o'clock comes, they got to go home and put the side dishes on and make the Turkey. <laughs> and, and so everything's wrapped up and I'm driving home. I'm like, Bitter thoughts, man. Why am I still doing this? God, Jesus, this stupid music business. Who do I think I am? Putting on my hoochie outfit, shaking my butt, and telling jokes, and um, and I expect people to pay me and come to my shows and like and stay out. What the heck am I doing? And and I truly believe that there there is a universal uh, creator or whatever. That's we each of us are their favorite television show. And wow. I have a very great television show going and the creator is very interested in me. <laughs> and it, and, it, and whatever it is, is sitting up there going, seriously, is that what you think? You really, you, you really think this, that no one would care if you never sang another song? You really think that? Ah, you really think that you suck on guitar and you really think that you're blah, blah, blah. All right. Here, I'll show you what that would be like, George Bailey, and it's a wonderful yeah, life. Right? Oh. Yeah, right? Yeah, boom. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. a great. That's a great way to think about it. I mean, that's that's. You're right. That's it, right there in a nutshell. <laughs> you know, but I mean, yeah. the the fact that you're able to come back the way you've come back and then get the ball 
rolling again and and the fact that you're able to play guitar again and 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 oh, function so and all great. that and i mean so now you're doing yoga all the time you're obviously doing your live stream so you're doing your live stream on thursdays and sundays what'd you thursdays say 6 p.m saturdays. thursdays and yeah. saturdays happy hour blue party is thursday and saturday, saturday at 6 p.m central standard time and that's right on liz mandeville's facebook page so they've yeah, got to go over live. and They've got to go over and like that. And of course, the new recording playing with fire, LizMandeville.com. So we've got to send everybody over there to buy that. But yeah, before I let you go from Amazon too. Amazon's got it. Okay. It's on Amazon. It's probably up on uh up on Apple Music, I would imagine, as well. And all, all the good yeah, spots. Please right? follow me on Apple. Please follow me on Spotify. Yes. Yes. Well, and we'll link stuff up in the description and everything so everybody can find you that way, too. But before I let you go, we got to do one last plug. The June 18th. I mean, this is going to be an exciting show. It starts at 7 p.m., goes till 830. So I'm assuming you're going to be in some timeline in there at some point. They'll get to see the video that you do, that you talked about. I can't wait to see it. And if you go to Chicago dot com, you can register and you can watch the entire performance, uh, which will also include. Dennis DeYoung, Sticks fame, of course. Jim Peterick, our good friend Jim Peterick. Ides of March, Survivor, wow, yeah. everything Incredible else in right. between. What a great – I mean, he's the great dude, man. He's, he's uh, uh, I've known him for a long time. Great guy, great guy. And I know you know him too. I mean, he's all over. Always supporting the music scene here in Chicago. He still, he still uh, hangs out, still lives in town. So he's a great person, always giving back. Michael McDermott, and then, of course, 16 Candles, and a whole host of other artists. But Liz Dave Mandeville. Spector. He's the other blues guy, Dave Spector. Oh, Dave's going to be I on, there. His name on there. Okay, good. Dave Sp I love Dave. Dave. I had Dave on the show. He's, he's a good friend, too. So I'm glad he's on, the, on this whole thing. Chicago is well represented, but all of the proceeds go to the Chicago – the Greater Chicago Food Depository. So exactly. head over. I got it right. <laughs> finally, um, head over to ChicagoEvents.com. And uh, Liz, thanks so much for jumping on. And I know you and I talked. And as we get closer, you're going to be performing at the Epiphany Center for the Arts coming up as part of our Blues series coming up in the fall. So when we get closer, we'll have to have you back on. And we can no the Voices of Chicago series. Voices of Chicago series. Well, I am so delighted that you invited me here today, Mike. It was really a pleasure talking to you. No, it was, a, it was a, my pleasure. I'm glad that we're able to talk, and I'm glad that we were able to tell everybody about all the different things you have going on because you have, you're one of those artists, man, that that's taken advantage of this uh, pause and the COVID nineteen. You're going to come out on the other side like gangbusters, as as you have with your injury, as you have with your career and everything else. So I cannot wait to see you live and in person somewhere. But uh, thanks for everything, and, and congratulations on all the success and the new recording. Thanks, Mike. All De right, I'll be seeing you down the line. Definitely. All right, thanks, Liz. Bye-bye. Liz Mandeville. You know, she's, I met her at the Chicago Blues Fest when we were running the merchandise for the Blues Fest at Chicago Jazz Magazine. We did that for about, oh, geez, eight years, I think we did it for. And I used to have live performances in the booth sell music, do the whole nine yards. Then it just kind of got a little bit too busy. We had too much stuff going on in Millennium Park. And then with all the different interviews we were doing, it didn't seem feasible anymore. But I met Liz the first year. She couldn't have been nicer, totally supportive, just trying to push music, trying to push her music, trying to push all of the blues scene, the jazz scene, everything. So thank God she's healthy. She's doing well. And it was a pleasure having her on. So again, LizMandeville.com. June 18th, Thursday night, 7 p.m., 8 to 8.30, ChicagoEvents.com, the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Thanks to Lynn Orman for uh, helping to set all of this stuff up because she is the uh, great connector here in Chicago, so I appreciate that. And I know that we're going to have Lynn on the show at some point to talk about her photography and talk about her PR business and talk about everything that Lynn does, but she's got a big hand in this Greater Chicago Food Depository event as well. So... All right, tomorrow, big show, big show, 5.30 p.m., special broadcast time, 5.30 p.m. We're going to have Michelle Thomas on and her husband, Darren Scorza. They're going to be on ahead of their live stream event that they're doing tomorrow night, um, which you don't want to miss. So we're going to do a pregame with them at 5.30 until 6. And then we're going to bring on Bill Chapin's going to come on, and we're going to talk all about 
uh, his his summer camps, his online teaching, his career, his music career. I mean, it's going to be a great conversation. So that's tomorrow at 6 p.m. So 5.30 p.m. tomorrow right here at Chicago Music Revealed. As I always say, please like us. Please share this out. Uh, you know, thank you so much to everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. We love the love. We love the shares. We love the likes. Let's keep this thing going. Of course, all of our past issues, our past episodes are on chicagomusicrevealed.com. And as I always say at the end of the show, oh, I've got to bring, I've got to bring up my, uh, got to bring up my sound music, man, that our good friend Craig Pilo put together for us. We don't want to end the show without that. As I always say, if you like what you're hearing, please tell your neighbors, tell your family, call the grandkids, Chicago Music Revealed, Mike Jeffers. We'll see you back here tomorrow on the big broadcast. Hopefully everyone has a great evening. And until then, stay safe, stay healthy. And we'll see you back here tomorrow, 5.30 p.m.